Recently, I've had a few art students ask me for advice for what to do after they finish their studies and go out into the world with a degree tucked under their arms looking for a job. Well, it's a long time since I started and things have changed a lot. Back then, there was no internet, <laughs> just the artists and writers yearbook that contained a lot of addresses and phone numbers. So I made a list of all the companies I wanted to work for. I phoned them up and made appointments to see the art directors. Then I trudged around London showing my portfolio. Sadly, it doesn't work that way anymore. Art directors are under a lot of pressure and pretty much rely on agents to do the sifting and sorting for them. There didn't used to be illustrator websites either. Now I don't subscribe to them because little pictures of your work on a site like that just look like everyone else's. And the only calls I ever got from illustrator sites were from other illustrator sites wanting me to show my work there too and pay for it. Now I asked an influential art director last week just how much has changed and this is what she said. The sad thing is there are so many hundreds of budding artists all trying to get their work seen these days that I could employ someone full time just to see portfolios or answer illustrators emails. It feels so harsh to say it, but in these tough times, we simply don't have the resources to see illustrators unless their work shows a unique commercial promise. Artists can certainly email or send in samples to art directors and publishers, and in my experience, they all get looked at. Sadly, the majority will get a thanks but no thanks reply. But if the work looks exceptionally promising, they'll either get a request for more samples or be invited to show their work in person. Now the key words here are unique and commercial promise if they want to be seen. And there you have it. If you want to work as an artist, making work to sell or to be commissioned, you have to be commercial. I'm afraid your degree is not going to help you unless you're going into art management or other full-time jobs where qualifications may be taken into account. Your degree has bought you three or four years to experiment and find your true purpose in life. A degree in art is pretty much a certificate of attendance. It is your work and your portfolio that really counts. Now, I'm not saying that a degree is worthless. You need the time, guidance and the companionship of like-minded people that a degree offers to develop your skills and ideas. But please don't think the world owes you work and riches just because you have that piece of paper in your hand. If you're still at college, the best thing you can do is to learn about marketing and start planning your final degree show. Now, a final degree show is not just a nice exhibition to show your parents what you've been doing for three or four years. It is a serious showcase. You can't rely on your teachers or professors to do it for you either. Start planning a humdinger of a show. And if you are miles away from the centre of the art world, hire a place near where the buyers are and start targeting them to make sure they come and see your work. You may well be in a sleepy backwater university town that has been lovely and delightful for the past few years, but art buyers and commissioners are not going to go out of their way to come and see your show. You need agents to see your show as well, and they probably all live somewhere fancy too. <laughs> are you getting my drift? Go and read about how Damien Hurst organised the Freeze exhibition when he left college. I'll put a link below. It rocketed him and his college friends to almost instant stardom. He and his friends are really successful now. It would be hard to repeat what he did, but you can learn a lot from his tactics. Now, while you have college or university facilities available, start producing business cards and posters to send to people. Start getting in touch with agents, or if you're a bit of an entrepreneur, start to learn something about business and marketing. It is not rocket science and you are allowed to be the master of your future success. There is no law that says you must have a gallery or an agent. 
Starving artists starve because they don't make work that people want to buy. Successful artists make stuff that people want and they learn how to market it and sell it. Do not get seduced by the starving artist in the garret idea. This fantasy was dreamed up by the writers of romantic operas whose audiences love to wallow in stories about bohemian failures dying of TB in rat-infested attics. This is romantic nonsense. Artists are allowed to earn a living as much as anyone else and they do not have to suffer for it. But like anyone else trying to make a success of their lives, you may have to make a few sacrifices along the way. But you don't have to wallow in artistic pain. This is a lie devised by devious agents and gallery owners to keep artists on a tight leash. <laughs> More than anything else, keep making the work and keep making it better. Know who you are, know who you are making it for and make your work for them. They are the ones who are going to buy it and make your future the success you so desire. Now I'll talk more about marketing in another video because I don't think people really understand what that term means. Until then, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. Keep making the work, keep making it better, and I'll see you next time. You take care now.